A lot of people have requested a tutorial about how to use the pen tool because I use it a lot on my tutorials to subtract objects from the background and you can use the pen tool to make uh, selections and I'll show you how you can do that in this video and I will also show you how you can save an image with a, with a path so when you open it next time on Photoshop you will have the path and you don't, you don't have to make the selection again and I, I will also show you how you can turn a selection into a path and how you can save that path as a custom shape. So let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial I will use two images. This is the first one. And I will use this to show you how you can work with the with the pen tool. And the first thing I'll do is, well, select the pen tool. I already have it selected. And you can also press the P key to select it. You can, uh, for this tool you have two options. If you go on the top of the settings bar, uh, I'm using Photoshop CS6, so I have this drop down list here. And you can choose from shape and path. If you choose shape, you will, I'll change the color. You can, you can create vector shapes like, like that. And these shapes can be enlarged and you can change the, the, the points here without losing quality. So this is a vector shape. But in this tutorial, we will not look at that. We will work with the path option. So depending on, on your version of Photoshop, on previous versions, I think you had like two selection boxes uh, from which you can, you could choose the setting. So I'll use the default settings here on the settings bar. And what I want to do is use this path setting here and use the pen tool to subtract this letter from the background. So I want to have it on a transparent background. Obviously using the magic wand tool or other selection methods would be a lot quicker than using the pen tool, but I want to show you how you can use the pen tool. And also because this has uh, straight lines and it's a lot easier to use the to use the pen tool on this kind of image. But well, let's uh, let's see how it works. I'll zoom in and 100%. So what you do with the pen tool is draw a path around the edges of your object and then turn that path into a selection. Now the advantage of this tool is that the edges that you get uh, once you create the selections are really sharp. So that's the main reason why most of the times I use this tool to make selections, even though it's quite time consuming depending on your on your object. In this case, it has a lot of straight lines, so you don't have to make too many, uh, you don't have to add too many anchor points. So let's see how what those anchor points are. Whenever you click, you add what's called an anchor point and you create a work path. So I added the first one. And if I click again, I create another one and you can see this line connects these anchor points. So what you do is just draw this uh, path around the object. So if you click and drag, you can see that you can change the, you can change this line, you can make it curved. So you can create all sorts of shapes. And the difference between this and the shape is that there's nothing here. It's just a line. So it's not filled with anything. It's just a line. And you can mod, once you add these um, points here, you can modify them. For example, if you want to move them, with the pen tool selected, press the control or command key and click on the point itself and you can move it around and you can adjust it to the shape that you have. I'll show you how to use that on this ladder here. But first I want to show you how you can add these points. And you can also see that uh, you have two controllers for each point and you can modify them. If you press and hold the control key, you can modify them. And if you want to modify only a side of this, uh, of this point here, you can press and hold the alt or option key and you can modify in these uh, lines as well only on on one side and also on the other side as well so you can create all sorts of uh, corners and if you want to modify both of them at the same time press and hold the alt key and click on the on the anchor point itself not on this point here on the anchor point itself just click and drag you can modify them both at the same time so you can create curves uh, like that so let's delete that uh, if you want to delete points simply select one point and press delete and then uh, select the other one and delete it and for example if you if you selected one point and you want to continue with the path just select the last point you added the last anchor point and then just uh, continue also if you hover the mouse over 
one of the points here in, in between. You can see that it turns into a minus and that's because I have this auto add delete option checked. So if I click, it will automatically delete that anchor point. But if I want to move it, I have to press and hold the control key, as I said, and move it around. So let's delete this uh, anchor, this uh, work path and start making a path for this uh, ladder. So what I'll do is just uh, add anchor points like that. If you want to move across the image, uh, you can see I have it uh, zoomed at 100%, so it's not uh, visible. What you can do is press and hold the space bar and then move it. So you can see it turns into a hand, the mouse, the, the cursor, and you can move it around. So let's uh, add our anchor points here. So the reason why I like this tool, as I said, is because you can adjust the path to every curve and you will see that the edges are really sharp. So, but this is also very time consuming depending on the object. Uh, it's not recommended to select hair, for example, because uh, it, would, it would take you an eternity to do that. But um, for objects like this, uh, you, can, uh, you can use it. Also, I use it uh, for models. I'll show you another image that I have. And for example, for extracting cars and uh, all sorts of objects. And even though it takes more time than using, for example, the quick selection tool, um, sometimes I prefer, well, most of the times I prefer using this uh, pen tool. And I know there are people out there that say that with the, with the quick selection tool, for example, you can get um, great results as well using the refine edge. And I agree with that, but I don't know, maybe this is just my way of working. You can do whatever you like, but I, sh I show you how you can use this tool. So uh, you can see that I'm creating this path around uh, the outer the outer edges of this uh, ladder here. And you don't have to be 100% precise here if you uh, just follow this edge and you can also use the quick selection, the, the refine edge, sorry, after that if you want to. And if you want to undo a point, just press uh, the undo. Um, keyboard shortcut, control Z or command Z on a Mac. And if you press control shift and Z multiple times, you will undo uh, multiple points. So I'll zoom out a bit and increase the spacing between the, the anchor points. So I don't want to spend too much time here doing this because I think you already got the idea. So just draw a path around your object and be careful with the edges and follow them. So I'm almost done. So see here I left too much space so what I can do is press and hold the control key, move it there and move this one a bit lower and then select the last one and continue with my path. And I have to adjust this point because you can see it's curved and I don't want that so I'll press and hold the alt key and adjust the line. Keep on going and adding more anchor points here. As I said, it's a bit more time consuming, but I prefer it. I like this tool. You can also create logo, logos with this, uh, with this tool if you select the shape option. And all, all kinds of uh, uh, shapes which you can save as custom shapes, I'll show you that. But well, um, I all, I'm already done here. And what I have to do now is close this path by clicking on the last point. If they are really close together, you don't even have to do that. Just right click and choose make selection. And if you don't see this menu, this uh, make selection menu, what you can do is here on the settings bar, this button says selection. So if you click this button, you will see another window. And we will use zero pixels of feather and check this option and click OK. So usually leave this by default. And you can see that now my path was turned into a selection and now I can create a layer mask for this. So if I click the layer mask icon, it will mask the background and take a look at the edges. I'll create another layer underneath this and fill it with the solid color. So for example, this one. 
and you can see that the edges are perfectly sharp so that's the the benefit of using this uh, of using this tool obviously you would have to do the same for this select this part convert it into a selection and mask it and get rid of the background so uh, you would have to mask these ones as well that's why I said it's a bit more time consuming if you go to the path tab here on the layers palette you will see that my have I have this uh, working path saved here even though you don't see it because if you select another tool the path uh, usually disappears uh, but you have it here on the work path tab so that's how you can subtract objects from the background using the pen tool let's see a few other things that you can do I'll close this image and I will not save it and I have this other image here it's also on a, on a white background because it's quicker for me to work with but um, uh, you'll get the idea so let's assume I want to turn this um, into into a silhouette and create a custom shape for it what I can do um, is use the magic wand tool to select the background it's a white background so it's really easy to select so I have my my selection ready I would have to refine this here maybe I would use the quick selection tool add this area to my selection okay now I have the selection ready I'll have to invert it by pressing Control shift and I to invert the selection and once the selection is ready select the marquee tool it doesn't matter which one and go to your image and right click and you will see this option that says make work path and if you click it uh, it will ask you for the tolerance and the tolerance is simply how close to match the selection because this will create a path and I'll type uh, two pixels and click OK and you can see my selection is now turned into a path and you can see it's quite close you can modify it, uh, each of these pixels if you press and hold the control key you can see the mouse and the cursor changes and you can see uh, you can now adjust each of these points and you can adjust it to a selection in case some area was not um, is not is not perfect so you can do that manually once you have this path one thing you can do one really useful thing you can do is save this image as a JPEG and the next time you open it for another project you can have the same path here and I'll show you that so if you go to the path tab you you will see the work path here and what I'll do is go to is go to file save as I'll save it on my on my desktop and I'll choose a name path uh, simply that and you can give it whatever name you want and I'll change the extension to the format to JPEG and I'll save it to my to my desktop I'll leave the quality to about 10 and click OK and what I will do now is open it in Photoshop you can see it right here from from my desktop and you can see it opens it on a new document and if I go to the path tab you will see that the work path is still here so that's really helpful if you like and for example this image imagine you spend like half an hour to create this path and you don't want to do that every time you open this image so you can save the image with this path on it and the next time you open it for your project you have it here and all you have to do is press and hold the control key click on it and boom you have your selection and you can mask this and you don't have to spend time again creating this uh, this work path another thing I want to show you is how you can turn this path into a custom shape once you have the path uh, selected the path layer from the path tab go to edit and you can choose define custom shape and you will see the silhouette here and let's give it a name woman and click OK and now if I select the custom shape tool I open this drop down list and you can see it right here on the bottom and I'll go I'll create a new layer I'll hide this one I can also delete the path now I no longer need it and I'll fill this layer with uh, white with white and now I can draw this silhouette of this woman and now I can change the color of it to for example to red and you can see that I have now the silhouette here as a as a vector shape and I can make it as big as I want without losing without losing quality and you can create brushes with this you can create whatever you want 
you can create logos, you can use it for, uh, for whatever you want. So well, that's uh, all for today. That's um, what I wanted to show you about the pen tool. I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. A lot of people have been asking about my tutorials, if they can uh, translate them and stuff like that. I remember you that you can use the embed code that YouTube gives you. So if you right click on the video on YouTube, you can choose copy embed code and embed the video, whatever you want. And you can also share them as long as you don't download them and upload them to other websites, you can, you can share them and you can embed them. And well, that's, uh, that's everything I wanted to say. Thank you for watching and see you next time.